your engine sucks, and so does mine. Look out! And that is true of any engine that's normally aspirated. Either that, or if you've got a turbo or a supercharger, it doesn't suck, it gets forced. Anyway, that reference is to what internal combustions are, uh, engine cycle, which is suck, squeeze, bang, blow. All of them do that in some form or another. And in this case, with this uh, Ecotec engine, what I'm doing is uh, controlling the sucking, for lack of a better term. All of the air that goes into an engine is metered, and it's got a specific amount that it likes, and if it gets any more, I'll uh, a vacuum leak from an O-ring or a cracked hose or uh, something being unplugged that shouldn't be. It gets too much air, causing short-term fuel trims to go nuts, long-term fuel trims, and then uh, the check engine light comes on eventually with a, oh, whatever the P code is for uh, vacuum leaks. There's at least one, depending on which bank of the engine you're working on. Anyway, this one is a 2.4 liter Ecotec, and I have been getting some codes for uh, P0171, which is vacuum leak. So I don't see anything else. There's only so many places these Ecotecs can leak vacuums, uh, vacuum, which is uh, much easier to diagnose on these than on a V6 or a V8. Uh, you've got a vacuum line for your uh, EVAP, you got a vacuum line for your brake booster, and pretty much everything else is uh, tied to this intake down here, which is just O-rings and, and uh, hose clamps. And then these at the injectors, these are what I'm working on now. And uh, these can get dirty, damaged, or swollen. And uh, so you just, I'm, today I am cleaning these all up, getting all the dirt off before I investigate further just to make sure that the code can go, just to make sure that the code goes away. And if it doesn't, then that'll uh, prompt me to do some more research. But I'm starting with the simple stuff first and the one thing that I'm very familiar with that uh, has actually eight O-rings. These uh, injectors have an adapter and the adapter goes right over the O-ring of the injector and that's all got to be sealed up tight. These go right into the cylinder head. This engine is not direct injected. Word to the wise, do not use RTV in lieu of or in conjunction with O-rings usually doesn't turn out so well. Brake clean is good for easily removing RTV from uh, plastic parts but don't use it on rubber because it uh, it'll it just dries out the rubber. This way it comes off real nice and easy kinda like paint stripper. nice and clean so I've got uh, most of these done I'm noticing that um, I've got two different o-ring sizes here always good to know which one's supposed to be this one's big fatter probably out of my stash but it should work fine but better to uh, use what's supposed to be on the car than what you got in your stash like this o-ring see how it does that that's not the most ideal situation so I'll look for another o-ring see if I've got another one like the smaller ones
It's always good to have a stash of O-rings. So here's the one that was actually in there, and it's kind of twisted and swollen. And looks like this one will fit just fine. Okay, so all four of these have their perspective O-rings installed. And I'm gonna shoot them with some WD-40 and uh, also clean these injectors here just with some WD-40. WD-40 is great for everything. WD-40. The number one lubricant for all your boats and hose. That's one well lubricated hoe. These these have a uh, these O rings have a green stripe on them. I suppose that means for fuel systems or something. And I'm going to go ahead and clean, give everything just a quick wipe off. Hopefully, the uh, these injectors have 200 and some thousand miles on them. Probably ought to replace them at some point here, but the thing runs good, so why not? Next thing I'm going to do is clean inside the uh, wells where these all fit into, as well as clean up the inside of these guys. You want all these surfaces where the o-rings have to seal to be free of dirt. Dirt, grease, sand, depending on where you live. It should be rubber on plastic and that's it. Okay, I'm cleaning out the uh, Injection ports, injector ports, just with the paper towel and some WD-40. Being careful to get down in there as far as I can and also on the outer portion because I figure these are so dirty that they've got some uh, issues sealing with the uh, O-ring sealing. going to go ahead and take a, a Phillips screwdriver just run it in there a little bit to get into the corners there's still some dirt in there as you can see here there's quite a bit of dirt that builds up and all that just sits right on top of these O-rings. I'm sure at some point in time they probably makes it down in there next to or past the O-rings. So we're gonna make sure all that's clean. Don't worry too much about uh, getting little pieces of stuff down in the engine. We'll blow it out. As long as they're little and not metallic and uh, Feel free to use a pocket screwdriver if you need to get some of the stubborn crud off. Just don't gouge the metal to where you mess up the sealing surface. These are ready to have everything put back together. Just as important as WD-40 is clean paper towels. I like the blue ones. Okay, I'm going to give these one last shot of WD-40 as well on the uh, injectors. I'm going to even shoot some lightly into where these uh, the bores that these go into just to make sure everything slides in together and you don't take a chance on cutting an o-ring so 
but all these just go right on like that. Very easy. This is the fuel rail on the HHR, by the way. You can't get any simpler than that, honestly. This just goes right back down here. It's a good idea to put your uh, injector connectors on first, just so you, while you can still get to them. If you don't have one of these on all the way, you will get weird codes. Especially if it's uh, intermittent. Those go on like that. One screw there. One screw there. You got a clip for the harness. And this job is pretty much done. And that is why I like these cars so much. I mean, I'm not in love with it or anything, but it's uh, so easy to maintain. You just saw everything I did. It's an afternoon. It's taken like 20 minutes or so to do this piece of cake. Uh, I can't imagine, I can't imagine working on V8s. I got one Suburban over there and uh, Got a V6 here, and my wife's car is actually four-cylinder Ecotec, and uh, these, they're just so easy. So easy. Anyway, that's what all, I'm all about, is maintaining your vehicles without spending a ton of money or wasting a whole lot of time having to do it. There's no big job with this car other than the major stuff like cylinder head replacement, engine replacement, transmission replacement. All the maintenance items on these, piece of cake. See more on the HHR playlist right up here. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it. I'd appreciate it. See more things you can do to help yourself on the DIY playlist right up here. If this video isn't odd enough for you, see the Project Oddball playlist right here. See the playlist on more. I'll do something else with that. See more on the playlist for H8. Take whatever. That's one well lubricated hoe. The engineers did a great thing on this car except the oil cooler bad move now that's one clean hope